again, I want to speak about something maybe a little bit different. This is the uh, sad incident in the life of the Prophet where he lost one of his children. The scholars, they differ as to which child this is in this, in this narration. Some of them say it was Ibrahim. Now you should know that the Prophet he had seven children. He had four daughters and he had three sons. Uh, does anyone know the names of these sons? Qasim. Qasim. Ibrahim. And Abdullah. Yes, these are the three sons of the Prophet But it was a decree of Allah that all of these three sons would pass away. In fact, the scholars say that they all passed away in their infancy when they were very young. As for the other four daughters of the person, they also all passed away during his life except for Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now I want you to think about this. Losing a child for a parent is the most traumatic experience they can ever go through in life. To be the one to bury your child, Wallahi al-Azim, you cannot describe that pain. But to have to go through that multiple times, to lose a child after a child, and every time he's losing a child, he has to explain to his other children, you're not going to see your sister until Yawm al-Qiyamah, you're not going to see your brother until Yawm al-Qiyamah. How difficult is that? And that was what Allah decreed for the Prophet wasallam. So what happened is that, uh, some of the scholars say when Ibrahim, uh, subhanAllah, the Prophet named his son Ibrahim out of respect and reverence for Prophet Ibrahim salam. And in one narration, after Salat al-Fajr, the Prophet turned around and he said to his companions with a smile on his face, Allah blessed me with a son last night and I named him after my father Ibrahim. Yes, Ibrahim salam. he named his son Ibrahim. So when Ibrahim passed away, some of the scholars say he was just like a toddler, yes? The age where babies become very beloved to their parents, where they start to say their first few words, they start to maybe walk around and they start to become playful. That is the age that Allah decreed that Ibrahim would pass away. Now the narration says that the Prophet Sallallahu he was in the graveyard beside the grave of his son, or his child that had passed away, and he started to cry. And some of the companions, they saw the Prophet crying, and they were shocked. How is it that a man can cry in public? And so one person said, Ya Rasul, do you cry? Like, you know, I thought men, we <laughs> not supposed to cry. So the Prophet said, indeed, the heart feels grief. And the eyes shed tears, but the tongue will never say except what pleases Allah. Subhanallah. He was basically saying that I feel I'm hurting right now and I can cry, but there's nothing wrong. But you know what? I will not go to the stage where I will lament and I will say things about the qadr of Allah that are not befitting for a believer to say. But in a narration in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet. He was sitting with his companions and one of the companions noticed that he dozed off like this. And uh, that wasn't him sleeping. In fact, that was him entering into a state where he's receiving revelation. So imagine if you saw the person like this, it means that Jibreel is somewhere here. And right now he is revealing to the Prophet fresh ayat from the heavens. And so this companion said when the person raised his head, he smiled. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, lima dahikt, what makes you smile like this? And the person said, right now, Allah has revealed to me a surah. And he began to recite, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna a'tayna kal kawthar fassalli li rabbika wanhar inna shani akahu al-abtar. And he said, do you know what al-kawthar is? And they said, Allah and his messenger know best. And the person said, the Prophet said, it is a river in paradise. Its water is sweeter than honey, cooler than ice, and its river banks are laced with pearls, and uh, the bed of the river is encrusted with rubies. Allahu Akbar. And then another narration he said, there will be a pond on the day of judgment that will be filled by that river of Kothar. And around that pond, there will be glasses, goblets, 
And then I will be there and my followers will come and they will be thirsty that day like they've never been thirsty before. And they will take from these glasses and they will drink from al hawd and when they drink, they will never be thirsty ever again. And he said, those uh, goblets, those glasses, they number more than the stars in the sky. And from one side of the pond to another is a distance between al Madina and Al-San'a, all the way in Yemen, stretching for hundreds of miles. Subhanallah. Now, what is the connection between this incident of losing a son and the Kothar River putting a smile on the Prophet It's a, it's a very deep message. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet ﷺ that I know you are hurting about your son and about the mean things that people are saying, but let me tell you what I have installed for you. I have installed for you an ummah that will be so great and so numerous on the day of judgment they will put a smile on your face. And they will come to you like children go to their father. And they will love you more than they love their own children. And you will be able to give them the gift of this river of Kothar, subhanAllah. So though we took away one son, we will give you an ummah instead, subhanAllah. And this is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consoled the Prophet you know, and trained him to, to, to aspire to continue even in difficult times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us with the Prophet on the day of judgment. May he allow us to drink from al-Hawd and may he allow us to speak to him and tell him, you know, we used to talk about you. We used to hear about your stories. Tell us the stories from your own lips now, inshallah.